This is Kim Wins from the Palo Alto Networks community team, bringing you a Palo Alto Networks video tutorial. In today's tutorial, I'll be showing you how to use zone protection profiles. Zone protection settings can be found on your network tab, network profiles, zone protection. As you can see, currently there is no zone protection configured. Click add and you will see the zone protection profile pop-up. Let's give it a meaningful name. And I'll go over all the tabs you see here. Now zone protection settings offer protection against most common flood, reconnaissance attacks and other packet-based attacks. It can be used as a template configuration for applying similar settings to multiple zones. These settings apply to the destination zone. Notice you have three tabs. One for flood protection, one for reconnaissance protection, and one for packet-based attack protection. Under flood protection, you can configure your device to be protected from SYN floods, UDP floods, ICMP floods, and other IP floods. The values you set in the alert, activate and maximum fields is the packets per second from one or many hosts to one or many destinations in the zone. Packets to destination zones are sampled at an interval of one second. For SYN flood protection, we support random early drop and SYN cookies. With SYN cookie configured, the firewall will act as a man in the middle for the TCP handshake in order to validate the connection. With random early drop, if the rate falls between 0 and the activate threshold, the drop will be 0. If the rate falls between the activate and the maximum threshold, then the drop rate will increase accordingly. If the rate falls above the maximum threshold, then all packets will be dropped. The alert value is the number of SYN packets received by the zone per second that triggers an alert or an alarm. These alarms can be viewed on the dashboard and in the threat log. The activate number is the number of SYN packets per second to the destination zone when random early drop or SYN cookie is triggered, whichever you have configured above. At the maximum level, you configure the maximum number of SYN packets able to be received per second. Any number of packets that exceeds this value will be dropped. ICMP flood protection, as the name suggests, applies to ICMP packets. In the alert field, you enter the number of ICMP echo requests received per second that will trigger an attack alarm. In the activate field, you enter the number of ICMP packets received by the zone that causes subsequent ICMP packets to be dropped. In the maximum field, you will enter the maximum number of ICMP packets able to be received per second. Any number of ICMP packets exceeding the maximum will be dropped. The same applies to ICMP v6. UDP flood protection, as the name suggests, applies to UDP packets. In the alert window, you can enter the number of UDP packets received by the zone that will trigger an attack alarm. In the activate window, you can enter the number of UDP packets received by the zone that triggers a random early drop of UDP packets. In the maximum window, you can enter the maximum number of UDP packets able to be received per second. Any number of UDP packets exceeding this maximum will be dropped. Finally, we have other IP flood protection. In the alert window, you can enter the number of IP packets received by the zone that will trigger an alarm. In the activate window, you can enter the number of IP packets received by the zone that will trigger random early drops of the IP packets. 
In the maximum window, you can enter the maximum number of IP packets able to be received per second, and any number of packets exceeding this maximum will be dropped. Moving forward, reconnaissance protection is used to prevent or alert administrators on reconnaissance attempts like TCP and UDP port scans and host sweeps. Unlike the flood protection settings, the thresholds you configure here are applicable to hosts in the zone where the protection profile is configured. You can enable each protection separately. The actions are allow, which will permit the port scan attempt, alert. This will generate an alert for each scan that matches the threshold within the specified time interval. Block. This will drop all the traffic from the source to the destination. Block IP. Choose whether you want to block by source or source and destination and enter a duration for the block to last. Interval is the time between successive probes for open ports. For host sweep, it is the time interval between successive probes to the network. Threshold is the number of scanned ports on a destination host within the specified time interval that will trigger reconnaissance protection action. Moving forward, we go to packet-based attack protection. Several tabs here offer many types of additional protection. I will go over each and every one of them. To configure IP drop, you can specify the following settings. Spoofed IP address. This will enable protection against IP address spoofing. PanOS uses the routing table on the device to verify if the source IP of the traffic is arriving on the appropriate interface. If this is not the case, the packet will be discarded. Strict IP address check. Select the checkbox to discard packets with malformed source or destination IP addresses. For example, discard packets where the source or destination IP address is the same as the network interface address or the broadcast address, is a loopback address or a link local address or is an unspecified address or is a reserved for future use address. Fragmented traffic. This will discard fragmented IP packets. Strict source routing. This will discard packets with the strict source routing IP option set. Loose source routing. This will discard packets with the loose source routing IP option set. Timestamp. This will discard packets with the timestamp IP option set. Record route. This will discard packets with the record route IP option set. Security. This will discard packets if the security option is defined. Stream ID. This will discard packets if the stream ID option is defined. Unknown. This will discard packets if the class and number are unknown. Malformed. This will discard packets if they have incorrect combinations of class, number and length based on some RFCs. I will add a list of these in the transcript below. Moving forward to TCP drop. Mismatched overlapping TCP segment. This causes the firewall to report an overlap mismatch and drop the packet when segment data does not match in the following scenarios. When the segment is within another segment. When the segment overlaps with part of another segment. When the segment covers another segment. Split handshake. Prevents a TCP session from being established if the session establishment procedure does not use the well-known three-way handshake. A four-way or five-way split handshake or a simultaneous open session establishment procedure are examples of variations that would not be allowed. Reject non-SYN TCP. 
This determines whether to reject the packet if the first packet for the TCP session setup is not a SYN packet. The options are global. This will use the system-wide setting that is assigned through CLI. Yes, this will reject the non-SYN TCP traffic. No, this will accept the non-SYN TCP traffic. Asymmetric path. This determines whether to drop or bypass packets that contain out-of-sync acknowledgements or out-of-window sequence numbers. The options are global. This uses the system-wide setting that is assigned through the CLI. Drop. This will drop packets that contain an asymmetric path. Bypass. This will bypass scanning on packets that contain an asymmetric path. Remove TCP timestamp. This determines whether the packet has a TCP timestamp in the header, and if it does, will strip the timestamp from that header. Moving forward to ICMP drop. ICMP ping ID 0. This will discard the packet if the ICMP ping packet has an identifier value of 0. ICMP fragment. This will discard the packet that consists of ICMP fragments. ICMP large packet. This will discard the ICMP packet that is larger than 1024 bytes. Discard ICMP embedded with error message. This will discard ICMP packets that are embedded with an error message. Suppress ICMP TTL expired error. This will stop sending ICMP TTL expired messages. Suppress ICMP frag needed. This will stop sending ICMP fragmentation needed messages in response to packets that exceed the interface MTU and have the do not fragment bit set. Moving forward to IPv6 drop, Type 0 routing header. This discards IPv6 packets containing the Type 0 routing header. IPv4 compatible address. This discards IPv6 packets that are defined as an IPv4 compatible IPv6 address. Anycast source address. This discards IPv6 packets that contain an Anycast source address. Needless fragment header. This discards IPv6 packets with the last fragment flag and offset of zero. MTU in ICMP v6 packet too big less than 1280 bytes. This discards IPv6 packets that contain a packet too big ICMP v6 message when the maximum transmission unit is less than 1280 bytes. Hop by hop extension. This discards IPv6 packets that contain the hop by hop option extension header. Routing extension. This discards IPv6 packets that contain the routing extension header. Destination extension. This discards IPv6 packets that contain the destination option extension. Invalid IPv6 option in extension header. This discards IPv6 packets that contain invalid IPv6 options in the extension header. Non-zero reserved field. This discards IPv6 packets that have a header with a reserved field not set to zero. Moving forward to the ICMP v6 drops, we have five ICMP v6 errors. Destination unreachable, Packet too big, time exceeded, parameter problem, and redirect. These require an explicit security policy match even when associated with an existing session. These are all the options in the zone protection profile. If you are satisfied with your zone protection profile configuration, click OK. 
you will see the zone protection profile that you have just configured. In order to apply a zone protection profile to a zone, we go to our zones page right here and we edit the zone where we want to apply our profile to. Simply use the zone protection profile drop down menu and select the zone protection profile you have created. Click OK. You will see that the zone protection profile is now configured to your zone. Apply this change by committing. And you should be OK to go. Note that you can also verify the zone protection profile in the CLI using the following command. Notice that the zone protection profile, zone protection, is configured to my zone untrust and you see all the options here that we have configured earlier. This concludes my video on zone protection profiles. I'll be adding some useful links and information in the transcript below. As always, feel free to leave comments in the comment sections below. Cheers!